Hey guys, it's ETA Prime back here again, and today we're going to be taking a look at what powers the App Games Legends Ultimate Arcade Machine. Now, ever since I picked this up from Sam's Club, I've been really, really dying to find out what CPU this thing is running. It's very smooth, so no matter what they have in here, they've done a lot of optimizations to the operating system itself. If you're familiar with this unit, all the magic happens inside of the control panel itself. And I have done a video in the past on this arcade machine, but unfortunately, it's not as easy as just pulling the heatsink off. They've actually soldered the heatsink to the PCB itself, so we can't even get to the RAM and the CPU to see what it is. I really do like the way they set this up. This PCB here houses everything we need. The Wi-Fi, the onboard storage, the CPU, the RAM, and even proprietary connections to the joysticks, buttons, trackball, spinners, and the HDMI out on this unit. It's definitely a total custom job and not just some Android TV box thrown in here. And in my initial first look video at the whole cabinet itself, we did take a look at this board. I didn't want to desolder it at the time because I didn't want to damage any of the components, but I've actually decided to go ahead and drill it out from the top. And hopefully this video can help out some of the developers who have been trying to find out what CPU is running inside of here so we can get some custom firmware or maybe even a port of RetroArch or something like that for it. But one of the main reasons I wanted to take a look at this is because I'm personally interested in what's powering this unit. I do a lot of work on my channel with ARM powered single board computers and I can kind of get an idea of what's going to really run on here and what's not going to run on here. So as you can see, we have this big heatsink covering up the RAM, CPU, and storage. Usually, most manufacturers use plastic spring-loaded tabs so you can remove this easily, but they've decided to use studs and solder it from the bottom to the board so you can't just take it off. You either have to desolder it or drill it out. So instead of trying to desolder it from the bottom and possibly damaging the board itself, I figured it might be easier to try to drill the studs out from the top, so that's what I'm going to be doing here. And it's going pretty smoothly so far. This drill bit here is just eating these studs away, so I don't think we're going to have any trouble getting this heat sink off this way. So I felt the studs give way. Now one is still catching a little bit, but I'm going to try to gently pry this off. Now I won't be able to put this back on with the studs, but I can use some double-sided heatsink tape and that's what I'm going to be doing to put this back on. I might just use a different heatsink altogether. Just to be safe, I ran a quick test and the board is still working. I was pretty sure it was gonna, I didn't hurt anything here. And when we get right down to it, it's powered by the Rockchip 3328. Personally, I was expecting something a little more powerful seeing how the UI runs and everything like that. It's actually a pretty low-end chip when you compare it to the newer Amlogic S922 or the Rock chip 3399. This chip actually comes in a lot of Android boxes nowadays that you can pick up for about $25 with 4 gigs of RAM, Android 9.0, and 32 gigabytes of storage. I also took a look at the RAM and the built-in storage, so we're going to go over the specs real quick. For the CPU, we have that Rock Chip RK3328. This is a quad core Cortex A53 CPU up to 1.5 GHz with a Mali 450 MP4 GPU. Just taking a quick look at some benchmarks online of this chip running Android, you're going to be hard pressed to play Dreamcast and most PSP games at full speed if you're running them directly from this chip here. Now streaming them from a bigger PC to this cabinet is totally possible, but running them directly on this chip is going to be a bit laggy if we ever get a port of let's say RetroArch for this cabinet. So it's not the highest specs in the world, but it does get the job done with some lower end main games and the stuff that's preloaded here. Personally, I was expecting a beefier chip in this cabinet given the price here. But if you're just looking to play arcade games, Genesis, NES, SNES, this is going to handle it just fine. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. I do hope this helps out some people deciding if they want to pick this up, or it helps out developers building some type of custom firmware or a retro arch port for this cab. If there's anything at all you want to see running on the Legends Ultimate Arcade Cabinet, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.